Hi everyone, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. I, I want to work on my um, Oceanic Adventure uh, Cinch Journal today. And I've you can see I've pulled out a pile of stuff. I've got a bottle of water. I have pulled out my Distress Oxide Sprays. Um, I, I haven't been able to find the inks uh, stain in this color. Um, and I kind of like the way that the um, oxide spray kind of muddles things up. So I think it's fun, but I'm using shabby shutters and tumbled glass today. And then I've, I found some more pieces of this, which I think this would be an excellent trim on the edge of a page, very raggedy. Uh, so I'm not gonna color those. I have some, uh, this is tea dyed. Uh, really loose. This is 50 grade cheesecloth. So I pulled that out so I don't need to color that. I've got just some scraps. I've got linen. Um, this is, um, I'm not sure what this is. If it's a 90 grade, this might be the 90 grade um, uh, cheesecloth, which is a tighter, tighter weave. But anything that's already tea dyed, I'm not going to to do that. I don't know if this is tea dyed or not. I'm going to save that for something else. Um, but I've got these little bits and pieces that I might tuck here and there that um, don't want that. I don't know how that got in there. I've got this scrap of lace, a couple of those, and this is my 90 grade um, cheesecloth, which I don't need all of that. So I'm just going to cut off, oh gosh, maybe, maybe this much. And um, I'll color that, keep this undyed. Um, I have, I've picked out just some scraps um, to use here and there. I don't need all of that. I've got plenty of the blue. And then, like I said, I've got that olive colored uh, green trim. I found a couple of tea bags, which I thought might be fun. Um, maybe to uh, put over some ephemera tags or something. Um, then I've got a little bit more of this. I don't think I need that much, so I don't want to color all of this, but this is the linen. Um, I bought a linen tablecloth a few years back, and I haven't even gotten to half of it. I've got so much of this stuff. It gave me, it was about 120 by 60, I believe. So I had the lace trim from around the entire perimeter and then all of the linen in between. So I'm going to color that. I'm going to go ahead and color this piece because I've tried to use this numerous times and I never get around to it. I believe this is, uh, yeah, this is crocheted. Um, this might be from my husband's grandmother's stash. This is the last piece of this dingly dangly lace that I have, and I really want to use this. I think I might even use that on the front cover. Um, here's another piece of white. Um, what else? I've got another strip here, and don't need that. And then I've got four yards of seam binding, and I'm using white as well as the Como beige. Um, and the main reason for that is I wasn't sure which color I was going to like better on the white or on the Como. So I thought I'd try both and we'll see what happens. Okay. So the first thing I want to do with this, I'm not going to color these. I'm going to put all this stuff behind me that I'm not going to color or dye, I should say. And then I want to get all of this stuff wet. Now I don't necessarily want all of this to be completely saturated in color. I'd like it to almost look like the color um, comes and goes and um, I want to get these, I might even take these bigger pieces over to the sink and wet them down. We'll see. We'll see how it goes here. Um, it, if I add the water and I don't have any gloves, so I'm warning you if it's going to make you crazy to see my fingers all different colors. Look away, <laughs> look away when I start spraying the Distress Oxide. Um, but I, I used my gloves. I had a box of gloves in here. I gave them to my daughter. I don't know where she put them. So um, we're going to wing it. 
So that's getting there. Do a little bit more. And I am using a slightly warm water because um, because I washed this bottle out. I had tea in here and it got all funky because I didn't use it up quick enough. So I'm mainly concerned about these uh, not being wet enough. So we'll see what happens. It, it might be interesting. And we can add more water if we want. Now, I remember Tim said, if you look at the bottom of the oxides, they kind of separate. And if, if the chalkiness is on the bottom of the bottle, you need to. And kind of spin them around. Don't shake them up and down, otherwise it'll come through the lid. So we're, I don't know if I can do that with my left hand. <laughs> I'm a right-handed person. So, and as you keep turning it over, so I'm just kind of rocking it back and forth and spinning that ball in the bottom. As you turn it over, you start to see it clear. And when the majority of it is clear, you'll know that you have it mixed enough. So that's what we're doing here. Yep, that one's nice and thick on the bottom of that one. You, I can feel it. Um, going around the bottom. I'm going to start to clear a little bit. Alright, let me keep shaking and I'll be back. I also have my little Carnair uh, rolling brush here that I'm going to use for drying off some stuff. This is a, a Carnair rolling brush and the brush is on attachment at the top. This one happened to be purple, I believe. Um, I've just removed the brush portion of it and this is a... Uh, you know, low temp heat tool. So, um, got that tip from Tim also. So I want to plug that in. You can hear it. That's nice. Okay. All right. So this is mostly, mostly mixed. You can see it's coming away from the bottom. Probably could use some more time mixing, but I want to get on with it. So and I'm and because I'm going for grunge, I'm not going for you know superior color here. So once more, I'm gonna just spray these down real good. I'm I'm I've used about an ounce of liquid. This is a two ounce spray bottle, and you can see some of it's picking up the ink from the which is. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to take advantage of that. And I'll just use some of that because grunge is better. Um, I love when I don't have to be careful with stuff like that. That's fun. Okay, so um, I, this is a two ounce bottle. I've used about one ounce. I think I said that already. But I'm just going to spray a little bit here and there and then toss it. Oh, goodness, that's strong. And then I'm going to come back and spray that so that it... Okay, I don't like that at all. So um, I'm going to fix that. I don't like this at all. At all, at all. And that's what I was afraid of. It was going to... I'm going to roll this up. Anything that has that concentrate on there like that and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it on my desk whoa I should be using my splat box is what I should be doing and then I'm going to water it down that'll be better okay and then I'm just going to use my finger and toss this inside And it's possible I'm doing too much at once. We'll find out, won't we? Okay guys, word of warning, don't put the water bottle cap on your Distress Oxide Spray. It was very difficult to get off. This is a smaller cap. 
I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> oh, I had to go get tweezers. And any, anyway, let me show you this real quick. Um, these are mostly dry, but um, the blue has mostly faded um, to the background. So I really like how this one came out. So we'll definitely uh, maybe make some ruffle out of that. Same thing with this one because it's the same fabric. Um, it took um, it took that really nice. I like the way that turned out. So we'll be using that. And then these um, these are fun. They kind of um, didn't stand out as far as the color. Um, they bled, and uh, this is kind of a tool with the embroidery on it, but that's okay. It has that yellowy, greenish hue. Um, this is the 90 grade cheesecloth. It picked up more of the um, um, vintage photo. You can see a little bit of the green in there, but um, I think it's because I mixed them all together and squeezed them and got that green, and they kind of got to be the same color. This one just is just grungy. I didn't get a lot of color on that. Um, this one turned out really cool. Got some, um, it almost looks like lavender in some places. There's blue and uh, the vintage photo and um, not too much green. Around the edges you can see some of the yellow. And then um, this one was kind of fun. The way this is, I'll probably put this on like a little bulb pin or something and just hang it. It's kind of got that blue gray which is what kind of what I was going for. This is really what I wanted, but it seemed like the more green I sprayed, the more yellow it got, the more blue I sprayed, then the more blue. Um, this turned out cool, but there again, it kind of, I think it's because these are polyester. Um, the linen took the color the best, um, but, the, but they'll still work and we will use them. And then this one turned out uh, grungy, but not really as colorful as I would like. Um, and then this is just, I haven't dried this yet. I just put this in a ball and it'll be crinkly tomorrow. And the same thing here, this one has more color. I, well, I can open this one for you here. Um, this one has a little bit more of the, the blue and green, but there again, the more it dries, um, the more it kind of models. And, but if I remember correctly, when I did this before, when it did completely dry, there were like places where you can see like that, where uh, it settled, the, the color settled. So, you know what, if I want more color, I can always add more later. But for right now, that's what we're going with. So, um, we'll be back tomorrow, and we'll start with page one. This is a 10-page journal, um, but I'm going to put lots of paper and... Um, things inside so there'll be plenty of spaces to write it's not a conventional just writing journal it's it's gonna be you could totally use it as a photo album if you wanted to uh, put photos instead of writing or do both or you know the hybrid journal um, do whatever you like but I just thought this one was beautiful when I saw Susie's and I wanted to try it so we will be back and we will start with page one see you next time